Hi, peeps. Hope you're having a good day and a good weekend. What's new? How are you? I just got back from my nightly run. I realized two things tonight on my run. Number one, I can't run the way I used to. Is it normal to lose all control of your bowels while you're running? I don't know. I don't, I don't remember that, but I'm kidding, by the way. All right. I can't say much for myself, but I will say I'm never constipated. That's one thing I have going for myself. Other than that, I, I have nothing. I'm empty. And the other thing I realized is I love this album. I was listening to it tonight on my run. Like, you ever wake up in the morning and you you haven't been thinking about a record, you haven't listened to a thing from that band, you haven't even been thinking of them, but you wake up and you've got a song in your head. It's just there. You don't know how it got there. You haven't thought about it for years, but boom, it's just there. That happened to me this morning when I got up. I heard spiritualize in my mind. I heard come together mainly. One of the most kick-ass songs ever written and one of spiritualized best without, without a doubt. And I realized I love this album. I mean, I knew that already. It just, I was reminded of it. I didn't realize it. I was reminded of it. This is an excellent record if you've never heard it. I know you guys still have your homework with Black Dog. And I hope you, you enjoy those records. If, did you listen to Black Dog? What do you think? Let me know. If you've never heard this, you need to hear this now, all right? Listen to Black Dog first, but you want to hear this as well. This is awesome. This came out in the summer of 97. Yeah, like, I want to say July of 97 around this time. I'll, I never forget, like, this This album came out the same week of, like, Radiohead, OK Computer, and The Verve, Urban Hymns, and The Prodigy, The Fat of the Land. It was this huge week. It wasn't even the month, it was a week that all that shit got released. It was a big week, man. 1997 was a huge year for albums anyway, obviously. But that week, all that shit came out. It was like, wow, I have a lot to listen to, man. Of all those four records that I just mentioned, this is my favorite. This is the jam right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. I love spiritualized particularly the two albums they did before this, Laser Guided Melodies, you, you know, the, you know, Electric Mainline, the, those two albums, are, they're amazing. And then everything he did in Spaceman 3, Jason Pierce is the man I'm talking about. Spaceman 3 was the original act. And then they split up and the other members formed a drum and bass thing called Spring Heel Jack. And then Jason Pierce did this. They, all, they were all SP names. If you pay attention, Spaceman 3, Spring Hill Jack, Spiritualized. The theme is there. This, though, this is just one of my favorite albums, personally. This is a go-to album for me. It's one of those albums where I wake up in the morning and I hear it in my head. You know those kinds of albums. It was this, this morning. I love this record. Man, this is good. It's hard to describe, just like all of my favorite records. It's a soul record at its heart. It's a rock and roll record, though. Really, a pretty true, true to form rock and roll record. But it, it's got kraut rock elements, ambient elements, psychedelic, psychedelic vibes for sure. It's an album that defies description, and that's why you should listen to it. Of all spiritualized albums, I think this is the one that hits me the hardest. And the album he did after this, Let It Come Down, awesome. His first four records of Spiritualized are just amazing. I like everything he's done since then. I don't like it as much as his first four albums. I always pay attention to Jason Pierce. I always take the time to listen to what he's doing. This is his greatest moment, I think, his greatest achievement. And I think it's a little overlooked. It's, I've noticed it's gotten repressed lately, so that's cool. It's starting to find a new audience, and I love to see that. It, it was easy to get overshadowed that year. I mean, if, especially if your album came out the same week as OK Computer, I mean, and The Fat of the Land. 
and Urban Hymns for that matter. And those are all great records. All of them. I love them all. But this is my favorite. What I love about this too, another thing is they it came out like a pharmaceutical prescription. All the info on it and, and some of the bits and bobs that came with it. It's like a prescription. Very cool theme, as you can see. Let me read this because it's backwards. When I look at this, it's backwards. For oral administration only. Use only as directed by a physician. See enclosed leaflet. Tablets contain a total of 70 minutes. Store in a dry place. Protect from light. Keep out of reach of children. And that's, that's, not, that's not the only thing that's packaged like a pill, like a prescription. You pull these inner sleeves out, which I will do now. And they're like, you know, when you have a, when you have some pills or some tablets and you have to push them through the little hard paper foil shit, the inner sleeves kind of have that feel to them. They're both like this. Double record set, a nice long lengthy album, a good 70 minutes, you know, just, just like the tablets recommendation, recommended dose, 70 minutes. I'll just show one of the record, one of the labels here. Both labels are, look exactly the same. They're white with a little gray stripe. Excellent pressing. This is the original, the original UK pressing from 1997. I don't know what the reissue looks like or sounds like. Do any of you have it? And if you do, how does it sound? Is it good? This original press sounds great. And this is the UK issue, but it got marketed for the US market. And there's a sticker in here that says that. I kept all the shit together. I'll throw this over here. Move these records over here. And I have some stuff. Yes, here we go. UK pressing for US release, special and limited. This was on the cover. I save, I save it. I save everything, you know? I, I try to keep everything together. It's fun for me. It's like a little historical statement, you know? That's there. At the time this was released, I, I think I've mentioned this before. I was a DJ back then and involved in the music industry. And we, we would, when records got released, there would be record release parties and people would get together like fans and people in the record industry. And, and we'd all hang out and basically get drunk and stoned and other things. And pass out promo shit and hang out with fans. And it was always fun. And, and the music would be playing. The album would be playing in the background. And I got these with it. Got three of these, actually. But these were being passed around as a promotional item. Little stickers. <clears throat> I think I ended up using a few of these for something. I don't remember what. And then it's got a... What is that? What does it say? Ingest. July 1st. Okay, so I was close. July. I thought it was the second week of July. In fact, I think that might be the UK date. In the US, it came out a few weeks later. But July. It was a big month for records, man. Huge. July of 1997. I mean, holy God. The sticker says... Let me get some light on this. Possible side effects. Sweating, nervousness, vertigo, impaired concentration, loss of memory. Fun. Love this release for shit like this. Also came with a postcard. This happened a lot with records back then. Especially in the UK, they would give you a postcard and then you sent it in and they would send you like information about the band, updates, tour info. That was pretty common then. And this, this is really fun. It came with like a prescription write-up <laughs> of the album. You know, when you get a prescription, it's got possible side effects and all that. That's what this is. Double-sided. Pretty lengthy. I'll read some of it to you. <clears throat> Please read this leaflet carefully before you start to take your medicine. If you have any questions or are not sure about anything, ask your doctor or pharmacist. Keep this leaflet in a safe place. You may want to read it again. Produced, arranged, and mixed by J. Spaceman. That's Jason, Jason Pierce. Let's see. What constitutes spiritualized tablets? And this is, the, this is just the track listing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. Awesome song. Just an intro, kind of a brief 
a brief intro, like three minutes long. Three and a half minutes, maybe. Come together. It's it's hard to argue that that's not the best. It's got to be the best song in the album, right? Come together. If you're looking for that hard rocking, guitar swirling, angry vocal, bordering on awesome punk rock style shit, it's just an awesome song. Jason Pierce just sounds pissed off in that song. I think I'm in love. Beautiful song. Very poppy, but also very psychedelic. And a sound that only Spiritualize has. All of my thoughts. Beautiful song. A slow ballad, a ballad track. Stay with me. Another another ballady track. Electricity, hard rocking, and one of the singles. The singles on here were "Come Together," I think I'm in love, and "Electricity." Let's see, "Home of the Brave," "The Individual," "Broken Heart," "Broken Hearts," an awesome song. That's another one of those. Ugh. Like when Jason Pierce really laid his his heart on the line, so to speak, when he talked about heartache and loss, and he had just gone through that breakup. The woman in his band, I don't remember her name. But she ran off with Richard Ashcroft of The Verve. Do you remember this when all that happened? Jason Pierce is like, what the fuck? She was in the band and she was in Spiritualized and they were making their records at the same time and she ran off with Ashcroft. And she was with Pierce. Not only was she in the band, but her and Pierce were together. She ran off with Ashcroft. Mm, It's hard being a man. It's hard being a man. It's hard being a woman too, all right? I just, I'm a man. I don't know what it's like being a woman. No offense to the women. I just, I only can go by what men go through. No God, only religion, cool waves, and cop shoot cop. My other favorite. Cop shoot cop is just this long, extended, kraut rocky, psychedelic jam. Awesome shit, man. A, a, A great way to end the album. Fantastic stuff. Seriously, guys, if you don't know this record, give it some time. Check it out and listen to it. And if if you think you know what Spiritualized sounds like, don't judge them. Give them a shot because this album transcends what you... Anything that you could possibly have a judgment on, this album transcends those judgments. I'd I'd be keen to hear what you guys have to say about it. Anyone who hasn't heard it. Just an awesome record, man. It never gets old. Very timeless. Excellent stuff. Don't don't let this one slip you by. And it's been reissued, too. If you want it on wax, I think the name of the label is Fat Possum or something. I haven't heard it. Check. Tell me how it is. But either way, listen to this record. You will not regret it, all right? Trust in me. You will like this. There are a couple of singles that came from this record I'm not going to talk about. There was It was called the Abbey Road EP. It just had a couple of album versions and an instrumental version. And Electricity was a single, too. I don't have that because it just had some instrumentals and some edits and some album versions. I just, I don't need that shit. I want B-sides and remixes. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of those instances. This is I Think I'm in Love. This essentially has one remix. It's a Chemical Brothers remix. The vocal mix is on the A side. The instrumental mix is on the B side. Not my favorite remix. I'm not a huge Chemical Brothers fan. I like their first album, Exit Planet Dust, but past that, I like I like Song to the Siren, too, their first single, which also has Weatherall remixes, which are excellent. But... Yeah, Chemical Brothers, most of their albums, there's like one or two songs I really like, and then the rest of it, it's just like, okay, sounds like Chemical Brothers. They don't shake up their sound too much. And not that they should, I just, I like it. I personally like it when bands do that. Chemical Brothers have never really done that. They found a formula and they stick to it. I feel like if you've heard one Chemical Brothers album, you pretty much heard them all. I love a few of their tracks, though, like Out of Control, the one with Bernard Sumner on it. What's that other one? Star Guitar? That's a cool song. It Began in Africa? That's a cool song. They have cool songs. I I like them. I'm more of a singles guy. I I seek out their singles more than I 
appreciate their albums, I think. They do the remix here. It sounds like Chemical Brothers. Think of this song with big block rocking beats on it. Now this, this is the jewel, the crown jewel of this album experience. This is the Come Together remixes. You can't see it. There's a little pill here that's embossed. I mean, I'm trying to get the light to shine. Let me get the light over here to... <gasps> oh my. Yeah, you see that? There you go. It says spiritualize. Really hard to see. Not a very exciting cover, but it does have that. You see that? A pill. There you go. Let me get that out of there. I'm going blind here. But forget about the cover. The magic is right here. Two excellent remixes, one of which is my one of my all-time favorite remixes. You've got Richard Fearless on the A side. Richard Fearless of, of Death in Vegas. Excellent producer. And then on the B side, you have the Two Lone Swordsman. That is a killer fucking remix. Weatherall and Tenniswood knocked it out of the park on that one. A fantastic remix. It's like a 15 and a half minute dubbed out kraut rock jam instrumental too he, he, they completely take out the vocals and there's like a vocal sample and the rest of it is just all bass all drums all extreme mood awesome shit you two lone swordsman weather all fans is this not an awesome remix or what one of the best he really doesn't, the, the Swordsmen really don't leave anything of the original in the mix. The bass line's kind of similar. I mean, this, I guess the bass line is similar, but they just fatten it up. They turn it into this dub monster. And it just goes on for 15 and a half minutes. There are these, these spooky haunted horn blasts going on. If you've never heard this remix and you like the, ha the haunted dance hall phase of Sabres of Paradise, Check this remix out. It reminds me of that phase. Very spooky. A haunted remix. Awesome shit. The, the, the original song is so powerful and so good. It just feels really, really good to have two excellent mixes. And the Fearless mix is excellent too. It's like a seven and a half, eight minute remix. Down tempo. Fearless keeps... The vocal, he, the one thing, I, the one area where Fearless, I think, fucked up, and maybe he didn't have the choice, but he chooses the edited vocals. The album version, Jason Pierce is saying fuck over and over, and then there's a radio version that takes fuck out. Fearless uses the radio version. I wish he had used the album version lyrics. It would have been much more powerful. It's still a good remix. Well, they're all in tennis, would they just scrap the vocals? They're like, shit, we don't want these. No sign of any vocal. You just have that bass line, and then all the rest are these disjointed horn blasts and, and mega bass lines. Yes. Listen to this. When, once you're done listening to Ladies and Gentlemen, We Are Floating in Space, listen to this. It's essential to have if you like that album. A very good companion piece. But the bottom line is, this is what you need to be checking out if you haven't already. God, this is a good album. If you just like music that's reeking and dripping with humanity, this is it, man. Albums don't get much better than this when it comes to a human being, a human being going through some, some pain. He's got a seriously broken heart on this album. He's got a song on here called Broken Heart. This song will rip your heart out of your chest. And then on, the next moment, it'll, it'll kick you in the teeth and dare you, to, dare you to try to run away from it and stop listening. It's, it's got a lot of drive in it. It gets beaten down, but it, it dusts itself off and it stands right back up and it's defiant. The way we should, we should all be. Every time we get broken and beaten down, we fucking stand back up and try again, right? This album is a illustration, a perfect, a perfect picturesque example of that.
right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. Check this out. Let me know what you think. All right, man. Take care. See you next time.